the borrowed boat strategy. They talk about using the outlets of other countries, using the quote-unquote boats of other countries, in order to access their different audiences It's a strategy the CCP calls borrowing the boat to reach the sea. In other words, putting state-sponsored propaganda into Western media outlets in a way that makes it feel like it's part of those outlets' normal content. For example, these paid advertising supplements are designed to look and feel just like articles and then slipped into major U.S. papers like the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. When it comes to, for example, publishing these paid inserts in American news outlets, it is manipulating, taking advantage of the established credibility of these different publications and their readerships in order to push Chinese Communist Party propaganda directly to their doorsteps and directly to them, say, on their apps or smartphones. How about how so every day state-run media provides TV footage from China for free through its news feed and through services like Reuters so that American media outlets can pick it up? For example, this NBC News video shows footage of flooding in China. And what do you know? Part of it is identical to the state-run CCTV feed. You can usually tell because state-run media reports on China's natural disasters focus heavily on how great the rescue efforts are. It sends the subtle message that the CCP is now, here to help. When it comes to disinformation tactics, this is a well-established method. When it comes to the Soviet Union, for example, one of the main methods they had in disinformation was to establish front groups, for example, nonprofit organizations or research organizations in the United States, publish papers on, say, different topics, and to try to get those topics published directly in U.S. news outlets. The idea was this. If they were to publish these things directly in Russian state news outlets, it would be seen as foreign propaganda. But if those same stories were picked up by these different news outlets and used roundabout ways to get them published, then it was seen as legitimate by the many readers of these different publications. And they found something interesting when it came to disinformation using these tactics, which is that the stories would often take on lives of their own within the respective countries. And there's radio, too. This Reuters investigation showed that programming from state-run China Radio International was being broadcast on radio stations in 15 American cities because many stations were willing to allow part ownership by Chinese companies to make financial ends meet.